Hello and welcome to lesson four or five multi-step problems. So this is going to be multi-step problems typically with division. So Trey signed up for 120 hours of flute lessons. He meets with his music teacher for the same amount of time each Monday and Wednesday for 30 weeks. How long is he in each session? So you can see he meets her twice a week. So we're going to have to figure out how much she, he meets each lesson. So I need to know how much this lesson is and how much this lesson is. So if I know he signed up for 120 hours for 30 weeks, I know I'm going to divide that out to figure out how much per week. So I have 120 divided by 30. Let's take our 12 and our 3 because those are compatible. 12 divided by 3 is 4 because 4 times 3 is 12. So now I can go back and add my zero. So I have 120 divided by 30. Remember when you do it to both sides, your answer stays the same. So my answer is four per week. So this whole week is four hours. So if it's four hours for this week, how much is it per lesson? Good, it's two hours per lesson. So our answer is gonna be two hours for each lesson. All right, let's try another one. So it says a store is having a sale on bookcases. Three bookcases cost $375. Two bookcases cost $258. If Mrs. Dell wants to spend as little as possible to buy six bookcases, how should she buy them? So our hidden questions are the total money for three bookcases cases at 375 which we would have to times it by 2 to get to 6 and then we need to know the total for the 2 so if I did 2 bookcases at 258 in order to get this to 6 I have to multiply that by 3 so those are going to be our two questions. So solving it, I can come over to the side, do 375 times 2. That gives me 10, 14, 15, 6, 7. So for the 3 each, or for the 3, it's going to equal 750. And for the two each, so I'm multiplying that by three, I'm gonna come over and do it on the other side. You should be doing this on your notebook paper. 24, 15, 16, 17, six, seven. So my other one is 774 for the two sets. So I'm wanting the three sets because it is cheaper. So it's finding those hidden questions and then breaking it down and working step by step. Let's do this last one here. Which question does not need to be answered to solve the problem? A rectangular bulletin board is 36 inches long and 24 inches wide. There are nine sheets of paper posted in the rows and columns on the board. Each sheet of paper is 10 inches long and eight inches wide. What is the area of the board not covered with paper? So what does not need to be answered? Okay, so I need a picture. So I have a rectangular bulletin board and it is 24 by 36. It's okay if you wrote it opposite. Then there are nine sheets of paper posted in rows and columns. So I know I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, I might need to make this bigger. Seven, eight, nine. And again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, that's nine. It's just a little long there. It's okay. And each of those, I'm gonna kind of label it over here to the side, is 10 by eight. So I wanna know the area that is not covered by paper. So I'm guessing if it's not covered by paper, then some of this, let's say this section here, doesn't have any paper. So I'm looking for this information. So do I need to know the perimeter of the board? 
Well, yes, because i got to do the perimeter in order to figure out how much this section is. Do I need to know the area of the board? Oh, well, maybe because the area is in the middle. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. What is the difference between the areas of the boards and paper? Okay, for sure we need that one because that is talking about subtracting the big area from the little area. And what is the area of the paper? Okay, well, let's look at this. Perimeter, area, area. What do two of them have in common? The word area. So if two of them have in common area and I'm looking for not, it's most likely gonna be the perimeter. And since I know for sure I want to find the difference between the area of the board and the area of the papers, then I know I need to know the area of the board and I know I need the areas of the paper, which means I don't necessarily need to know the perimeter. So A is going to be my answer.